cyberpunk, but I won't do crunch. Oh no, no, I won't do that. And some days it don't come easy. Some days my brain jack broke. And some days my cyber arm malfunctions. And these are the days that never end. It's another. Anarchy 69 stream. Hello, everyone. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm doing okay. Um, honestly, at this point, um, I'm going to try to stream as much as I can. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it back up to three days a week. Um, depending uh, upon when my, uh, classes are, will depend upon when they are. I'm no longer doing weekend streams unless they're, uh, fundraising streams for the simple reason that I spend my weekends with my girlfriend, Rachel. Uh, and as much as I love y'all, um, I don't know, my, my, my partner is more important than Twitch streaming, and so is, uh, my, uh, PhD. But, uh, you should go follow Rachel. Uh, she does occasionally stream and occasionally do TikTok, so if you want to see when those come out, um, I would suggest y'all follow her. Uh, I mean, that's a good attitude, fish and bread. Um, we're all human. Um, it's hard, especially for someone like me who is an expert in a certain field, um, to be humble enough to recognize that uh, when I have faults. Like, I know intellectually I have faults. That's, that's not, like, a hard thing to know. Um... I also know one of my faults is that I don't take criticism very well. Um, it's kind of hard to grow when you don't take criticism well. Um, that's definitely a fault of mine. Um, I haven't had it recently, and I don't know how much it has to do with the fact that I'm autistic and will occasionally have autistic meltdowns, but I found that when I do have autistic meltdowns, and that's a lot to do with anger and confrontation and I think I need to be better with that but other than that it's kind of hard because I know I must be wrong on something because I'm human I guess my point is is that it's very hard in that we're trained whether it's natural or our society trains us either way people think of themselves as being like almost perpetually right um uh, which can be, uh, well, which can be and is harmful, especially because there are people like me who don't take criticism well, which is not a good thing if you want to learn and grow. Um, so, that's a thing. Anyways, um, hello. I am back. Uh, again. Hold on one second. Oh, cool. Um, I got more, uh, si Oh, shit. Sorry, I was, uh, on, let's see, hold on one second, and we'll do that, okay, good, and, sorry, I just went on, uh, I just went on Twitter for no good reason, other than my brain is broken, um, Oh, I have an idea. Sorry, I'm trying to find something to satisfy my ADHD, because, like, when I do lectures, like, I'm, a, well, I mean, I guess it is a lecture. Um, uh, show equalizer, show visual, there we go. All right, good. Um. 
um, let's see, how is the, um, actually, I could just turn up the desktop audio, and that will only affect shit for myself. Um, let's see, how are the levels for the music? Oh, I'm a bit low, too. Um, is that any better? Yeah, it seems so. Uh, hey, Kira, how you doing? Still got the start. Yeah, um, my schedule has been erratic. Um, the only things that I've been consistent about is doing basic executive functioning, like brushing my teeth, registering for classes, getting meds and shit, and hanging out with my girlfriend. Other than the basic functions of existence and doing PhD, I have been pretty bad. Um, I mean, that's huge progress over what it was a year ago so like progress good um yeah just cause with these headphones uh it's a lot harder to hear things um so I'm just turning that up hopefully y'all can uh y'all can still see it or, or rather y'all can still hear me hold on I'm trying to I thought I found a good solution because, um, it says show visualizer. No. No. Uh, ah, okay, here. No! Why won't you fucking let me show the iTunes visualizer? So I can have something for my ADHD brain to do. See, this is why you should prep shit beforehand. Instead of just thinking, Yeah, I can totally just do this while looking at my computer. Um, uh, uh, this is, uh, everyone, this is why I'm, uh, I'm not making, uh, making bank streaming. Um, I mean, partially because the mo, uh, partially because the most, uh, the most motivation I get to stream, uh, is if I'm doing some sort of fundraiser. So there's that. And also, I don't prepare things. So, uh, yay! Hold on. Image. Slideshow. 80. <laughs> oh, literally. Oh, God. I am, uh, no, that's not it. Image. Slideshow. Nature. Okay, this is purely just for me. I just need to point this out. This is for no one else's benefit other than my own, because I can talk about this shit off the top of my head. Um, which I'm gonna start doing. Hi. Uh, we're talking about ableism, and how I won't say it is the center of all oppression, in that, you know, it is the er oppression or whatever. Um, I think David Graeber actually does a good job of showing that the creation of patriarchal thinking uh, was really, you know, at least in the societies that did develop uh, rigidly hierarchical and uh, coercive power systems. Uh, it was it, it was the creation of a distinction in gender. Um, but ableism does feed very much into the rhetoric and thinking of every vector of oppression that I have ever studied. Um, very large. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I was saying, um, these headphones, um, since they don't go around my ears, um, I can't, uh, really, uh, hear stuff as well, especially because there is noise around me. Uh, would I sacrifice to have a beehive wig, um, and look fabulous? Oh well, uh, I like fashion. Um, especially wigs, as anyone who has even glanced at my channel, um, oh no. Anyways, we should probably start at the basics, cause, you know, I don't want to assume knowledge on the part of other people. Um, actually, let me check the levels just one more time. Um, okay, we'll turn down the desktop audio up. Bit. Hopefully that's good. Um, ableism's pretty simple. Or, or simple, at least in terms of explanation. It's a prejudice against disabled people. Um, 
I mean, obviously, it goes way more deep than that. Disability as a category has, and like most, vec if not all vectors of oppression, changes and morphs throughout history. Um, I mean, as it exists today, it's... Uh, I mean, the thing is, is that society disables us, um, for the most part. Uh, there are things like, you know, chronic pain, or I'm getting an MRI tomorrow to learn why I had to take painkillers for two weeks straight, or else I would have had massive migraines. Um, that shit is genuinely disabling. Things like, you know, fucking, uh, 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 not being able to walk. That's disabling because society doesn't give a shit. Uh, and, you know, won't make accommodations for that. Uh, so that actually is a thing that we need to remember. And also, there isn't any shame in using the term disabled. I used to think there is, but there isn't. It's simply an acknowledgement of the material reality that we live in. That unless you fit the able-bodied stereotype, uh, you're gonna get fucked over in some way or another. Um, even such a simple thing as depression, which, by the way, capitalism kind of causes. Uh, yeah, anxiety and depression are... While there is... While there probably is some genetic stuff to it, like, for instance, I do have clinically depression, clinical depression, um it will push people who otherwise might have been neurotypical into, uh, uh, you know, having things like depression. Um, so we can, uh, it, you know what, I need to, god, <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to get a drink. My mouth is getting dry. I always make this mistake. Remember, kids, do as I say, not as I do. Hey, girl, I'm just looking at you. Hey, girl, when you do what you want to do. Hey, girl, when you do your non-binary makeup. When you put on that bronzer. When you put that blush in that anarcho communist red and black streaks. In your hair in the morning in the shower. All right, let me get some flavoring powder. Please put a picture of your face from ten years ago without any obfuscation of your zygomatic bony or forehead ridge line. Or your Chad Moy combat skull. You need to see your Chad Moy combat skull. Mark Zuckerberg needs to see your Chad Moy combat skull and what phase of ovulation cycle that you're in and how many calories of B protein and trans fat and saturated fat did you have yesterday in the ramen that also uh yes i am wearing like a a, a, a a an outfit that totally doesn't match what do you want from me i i'm in my house and i twitch stream 99 percent of the time you can't see below my waist um, so don't at me. I promise I don't go outside in front of IRL people like this. Um, that's, that's not a thing. Anyways, I think we probably can go deeper into ableism, just kind of to give some more, uh, Oh, fuck it. I'm carving myself up an apple. Girl, when you put me in your total backpack, you just carry me around town and talk to me like I'm your best friend, like I'm your boyfriend in the city. When you go to the protest, when you have your IWW meeting, and I watch you and all of your friends, and you go on the rent strike. Holding their posters, drawing with the sharpie ears, fuck landlords and capitalists, and I, I feel like I'm in your presence. Girl, you know, I'm the personal support system in your life. I'm the ideal man, except I'm a two foot tall yellow lightning shooting cartoon character. 
Hey girl, I'm electrified by the way that you look at me, the way that you look at your boyfriend. I imagine that it's me and I look at you through your Google Glass as you make out in the basement of your parents' house. I look at you through the Amazon nest above your parents' garage. I look at you through your mother's laptop As she drains coffee on the kitchen table And you sneak past to get something from the fridge Girl, the zigzag of my Pikachu tail is like the zigzag of my EKG When my heart beats so fast When I see you enjoying those bath bombs When I see you on that picket line giving out your You know... If I really want to get the viewership, I should go, uh, imagine a <laughs> very large flower pot. Feed me, Seymour! I'm the NB Audrey 2, with better hair. Anyways, um, that's the great thing about cyberspace love. You can smell. You know what I might do one day? I might go full Destiny and talk about how whiteness is trash and bad while playing fucking Halo or something. Because I do that shit anyway, just in regular conversation. It's called having ADHD. Um. <laughs> but apparently not today. Um. Even though. Hmm. See, I need more of my attention span to play, uh. To play something like Mass Effect. Uh, then, uh, it, and I already have that downloaded, so I'm trying to think what, like, mindless FPS in my Steam library can I use, or rather that I want to use. Oh, damn. Font 3, dead heart. Oh, God. Yeah, nothing really is popping off the page. Just too bad, because I have a bunch on the Nintendo Switch. But, uh, it, you know what, eventually I'll just set up my Xbox and stream it to this. Um, nice, fish and bread. Alright, back to the topic. Ableism. Um, it's meant various things throughout history, but in today's context, it essentially means you either have a physical or mental disability and you're discriminated against. Uh, that, for me, I'll name all the disabilities that I currently have because they're good examples of, uh, of, you know, both physical and mental disabilities or neurological disabilities or whatever. I'll start with my physical ones because there are less of them. Um, I am very close to legally blind. I'm wearing contact lenses. Let me show you how thick my glasses are. I don't know how well, uh, y'all can see that. Um, shit. I don't know how well y'all, uh, can see that, um, but this one on my left eye specifically is, oh, a good inch and a half thick. Anyways, let me put this back in my bathroom. Because of my ADHD, if I don't put things in the exact same place or general area every time I put it down, I will more than likely lose it.
Yeah, because one of AD, the ADHD oh, symptoms that I didn't even know was a thing until fairly recently is a lack of object permanence. Uh, not as in, like, you know, fucking dogs who, you know, you you throw a ball away and if they look away for, like, ten seconds, they won't know where it is. Uh, it's more of, if we don't put something down, like, where we usually will find it, it's a better than... It's a not insignificant uh, chance that we will lose it. <laughs> hey, Zarel, it's good to see you. Uh, we're talking about uh, kind of laying the foundations of what ableism is, uh, and then we're going to go into a larger conversation. Um, and I need to take breaks to eat my apple, so you fuckers uh, better let me do that, or else I'm going to be hungry. And I get hangry. I had a good breakfast, though. Like, I had, um... I microwaved some leftover chicken. Uh, half a uh, sesame chicken, which, unfortunately, the marinade I used didn't really punctuate it. I don't know how the fuck they make sesame chicken. Unless they use, like, breadcrumbs or something. Um... It actually would make sense if they put the breadcrumbs in, and, and then, um... Uh, then maybe, like, they used egg to, like, connect the sauce and, like, fry it that way, maybe? I just literally just, like, pan-fried it, uh, after soaking in peanut so uh, in the sesame sauce. Um, but yeah, my stomach is still grumbling for some reason. Um, yeah, so, for instance, you know, y'all saw my it, absolutely horrible vision. Um, which... I mean, is a disability. I am lucky that my parents are able to afford it. it well, that and health insurance. Uh, yay, Medicaid. Um, I've been able to, you know, afford to have very expensive contact lenses and in glasses. Um, without that, you know, I need significant help. Like. I'm very close, in my right eye is, my right eye is essentially only useful at this point for depth perception. Um, I'm more or less legally blind in it. Oh no! <laughs> oh, speaking of ableism. Da -da 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 -da. Um... What else do I have? I have incredibly severe allergies. As climate change has gotten worse, and it's getting worse, they're only going to get even worse. Um, I'm not sure whether... Uh, I do get my uh, allergy-based migraines because my sinuses, I want to claw them out. Uh, I'm on Allegra, which used to be a prescription-only uh, strength uh, antihistamine. Uh, in order to even function outside, even during, like, you know, non-peak allergy season times, uh, my nostrils are very sensitive to temperature changes, so I'll get chronic nosebleeds a lot, um, and of course the classic, uh, I have asthma and that impacts my allergies, and sometimes, you know, I'll have trouble breathing, uh, not as much recently, but I will get, you know, just stuffy nose. I literally had to turn a rag into a fucking handkerchief. It was... I would have gone through just so many fucking tissues otherwise. Just with blowing the nose. And of course, uh, my eyes. Uh, it, there, are, there are weeks, especially during the height of allergy season, when I cannot wear my contact lenses. And, of course, a few weeks where I just can't go outside, which sucks because I don't drive. Um, like, I don't know what I'm going to do come spring when I have to 
travel to my girlfriend's place. It, it <laughs> and of course, uh, it, since my sinuses apparently were perfectly fine during uh, during the two weeks that uh, I had to be on constant painkillers, or else uh, or else uh, I would get a migraine. Uh, apparently, my sinuses were fine. So uh, yeah, I might get recurring chronic migraines. So. Like, I don't know what that's all about. So, yay! Something new. Uh, migraines for me are crippling. If I get a migraine, I literally just... I fucking suffer. I need to be in bed. Darkness everywhere. No fucking sound or light. And for at least, like, an hour or two, I am essentially in bed. Either... Standing still or writhing in pain. Um. I have no idea what the fuck that even means. Um. There's no giving personal examples of. Type of shit that disab uh, um, disabled people have to go through on an everyday basis and. I mean, obviously, it takes a huge emotional toll on us. Um, oh, I'm actually... No, yeah, I did say I have asthma. Um, I also um, can't have artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives in food, which limits my food choices. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> Imagine thinking penis sizes mean anything. Um, they don't. Uh, there are people uh, uh, who actually prefer smaller sizes because, believe it or not, beyond a certain point, if you have a vagina and a penis is big enough, it's actually uncomfortable. Um, yeah. Uh... <laughs> And, and for everyone's information, I think my penis is, like, slightly below average in size, which, I mean, like, I don't really give a shit about it. It's the only penis I know, and I want my partners to love me for my personality and my awesome wigs, not because I have a big penis. I gotta tell you, getting over that insecurity has been... It's actually been a lot easier than my other insecurities uh, uh, that I've gotten over, believe it or not. Um, that's not a disability. Your penis... Uh, well, actually, to be fair, if you have, like, too big a penis, it might actually get very uncomfortable, like, wearing pants, and it might be hard to find sex partners. So, like, that actually legitimately could be considered, like... I mean, not to the degree of the shit that I'm talking about, but it might legitimately hurt it. Uh, the irony that a lot of the toxic dude bros, um, uh, 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 uh it, the irony for the toxic dude bros who are just like, yeah, pe the bigger the better, penis size, uh, and I'm like, if your penis size is too large, it could legitimately hurt your sex life. Like, if it's large enough, it, it, as I said, it will, you know, hurt vagina havers and probably will also hurt with butt stuff, too. Um, uh, another apple. Um, anyways, I think that's the extent of my physical disabilities. But yeah, if I didn't have all this, like, fancy-smancy medical shit, I would be in more or less the same zone as, you know, blind people. And there's nothing wrong with being blind. But in the society we live in, it's incredibly crippling. Um, and of course, we get to my mental and neurological disabilities. I don't want to spend, like, too much time on this, especially because I have talked about this a lot in the past. 
But I will talk about, you know, all my diagnoses. I have Tourette syndrome, uh, which mostly manifests in uh, physical tics. Uh, sometimes when my tics are really bad, one of my tics is holding my breath. Um, luckily, I have, you know, not suffocated on that, but it gets incredibly uncomfortable when that happens. Uh, and it could be potentially life-threatening, uh, if it develops into something where I'm holding my breath longer. So, that's fun. Um, I have ADHD, which, you know, essentially means, among other things, I have trouble concentrating on just one thing. Um, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to go back to in-person classes when, uh, when, uh, I can't, like, have my fucking Nintendo Switch playing the whole time. Uh, which, by the way, is literally how I did my master's research. Um... Yeah, because despite the fact that I got a note from my psychiatrist, the disability person was like, Well, I can't give that, give that accommodation because the ADA doesn't specifically match. I'm like, motherfucker, I've gone over the official government, uh, uh, a government, uh, issued, uh, TLDR. I mean, maybe the, uh, well, TLDR as compared to the actual, actual law, um, and literally it gives examples, uh, but it, it, it doesn't list specific disability accommodations, it will give you examples, it's not like, you can do this, 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 and this, but not this, it's like most laws. It gives discretion to people. The operative term is reasonable accommodation. I did everything right. I literally got a fucking medical doctor licensed to practice in the field of psychiatry saying, this person function, uh, this function uh, person has a hard time functioning in your bullshit idea that, oh, we can just have conversations for two hours, uh, uh and, you know, not need to, you know, distract yourself. Well, motherfucker, even when I'm listening to the most interesting anarchist theory or history, I still have a need to do something else. Like, I'm, I'm literally watching a fucking slideshow right now uh, of shit, and eventually I'm probably just going to evolve into the video game and theory person. <laughs> um, and, uh... God, uh, it, there's that, and, uh, when I took a trip to Vermont two weeks ago, I lost, like, a lot of shit. I forgot water shoes, uh, up in Vermont, I forgot my sunglasses, I forgot my fidget spinner, and an extra set of head- that's four things. And, of course, two days ago, I- I forgot to bring my fucking keys with me outside my door, despite the fact that I have a very good record of not losing my keys because I put them in the exact same place every time I get home, which is on that desk right, uh, dresser right there below, uh, below the wigs. Um, and I always put it in the left pocket of whatever pair of shorts or pants that I'm, uh, I'm going, um, and now my dad was able to bail me out because they have another set of keys at my home and they live nearby, but that won't always be a case, and chances are I won't be lucky uh, in that my landlord is surprisingly chill with the fact that I'm studying anarchist history. Like, like he literally asked me in a conversation, oh, what are you studying for school? And I was like, and, and he was interested in that? <laughs> point is, I'm not always going to be so lucky in that I probably could have also called up my landlord and he probably would have let me back in. Um, and that's why I can't sing a certain Dead Kennedy song anymore, because, <laughs> because I don't, uh, it, 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 it's what gets, uh, I was thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> I could legit 
legitimately point out that the Dead Kennedy song, Let's Lynch a Landlord, is quite obviously parody? I mean, because it is. I'm sorry, as much fun as it might be to lynch landlords, we should just form tenant unions instead, honestly. Um, which I probably also sh shouldn't be saying out loud, but whatever. Um, there aren't even enough people in my place to form a tenants union. There's like three of us, so... It's not real. If you're listening to me, Dave, I'm not planning on forming a tenant union because there's like three people in this place. Um, anyways, disability uh, can also affect things like housing. Uh, there's actually a loophole in laws where if there aren't a certain amount of people in an apartment or like housing rental type place, you don't have to have an elevator or anything. Uh, for instance, as far as I know, there, there is no, uh, there is no elevator here, but to be fair, that's also completely legal. Um, to be balanced, the law should be changed. Anyways, uh, I also have OCD, which means that, among other things, I'm constantly fidgeting with the positioning of my monitor and my chair and my keyboard, which takes time out of my day, which is very annoying, and the whole emotional, uh, labor of being frustrated. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fun. Um, what else do I got? Uh, many things. Uh, anxiety and depression. Yeah, those are just, like, legitimately horrible, especially when I'm in a deep depre- when you're in a deep depressive state and you have suicidal thoughts that's never fun, or just not even suicidal ideation, but deep depression can just make you lethargic, sleep all day, and just do nothing. Um... I mean, to be fair, Fish and Bread, it's not just tankies who- who- uh, who argue that? And famines and starvings also happen in stateless societies. Um, I'm sorry! Like, I, I hate to yuck your yum, but, like, there are legitimate criticisms of the state. Like, like I'm an anarchist, obviously. But that really... Well, I mean, to be fair, you don't need a state to allocate resources well. Um, but... Yeah, anyways, um... Depression and anxiety also... Hamper, um... Hampers my dating ability, um... It's a lot less so than it used to be, um... At this point, the thing that hampers my dating ability is most people aren't leftists, poly, and okay with wig wearing. Um, but that's just what it is. Um, and... I mean, anxiety... It, it, this is just like a very short over... It's actually not so short shit. <laughs> um... I'm kind of giving examples of the everyday struggles of disabled people and how abled people just kind of take this for granted. And, but this is the most fucking historian thing I do. I give a stream title about a topic and I'm like, but then we need to give the context to all of this. And I take two fucking hours doing it. I'm an academic, I can't help it. Mm. Oh yeah, and of course I'm very autistic. Which, if you know anything about autism, is probably the best case study for both systemic and just individual ableism.
No, yeah, I totally get that key raw. Happens to me too a lot. I hate when that happens. Um, yeah, of course, you know, my autism diagnosis. Uh, which, fun fact, I didn't know this, but autism diagnoses and ADHD diagnoses are something like 50% correlation. Um, so there's a coin flips chance. If you have one, you have the other. And yet, uh, if I recall correctly, um, it, my source is a lovely YouTuber named Laura K. Buzz. She made a short about it a while ago, so you'd have to check her for the ultimate source. Um, but there's, like, diagnostic criteria in the bullshit medicalized disability field that essentially says you can't have both. Um... Yeah, so, you know, I've had all the classic autistic struggles. I also have dyspraxia, which makes it very hard for, you know, my fine uh, motor skills. I literally had to go to occupational therapy as a kid, which, by the way, most people can't afford, and I'm pretty sure insurance wouldn't have covered it, uh, to be able to do simple things like tie my fucking shoes. I hated going to OT as a child, but that was because I was a child and I had to go through, you know, extra work that other kids didn't have to. Um, I mean, that's a whole other story of the trauma of growing up under our society, which it is a trauma no matter how good your parents are, that is still a thing. Um, even more so with disabled people. Even, even more so with uh, neurodivergent people such as myself. Okay, now uh, I think we can really get into the meat of the discussion. How does ableism intersect with all other vectors of and power systems? Well, it's quite easy. If you're an other, if you're otherized, chances are you are considered disabled in some way or another. There's a very easy way to, deter to, to demonstrate this. Eugenics. It, the whole idea of, uh, of you know, non-white folks being inferior genetically, you know, they're, it, it, maybe they're, you know, oh, uh, in the case of, um, of, uh, of black, uh, of, um, of black people, if I recall correctly, a lot of the eugenics bullshit claimed that they, uh, they were less intelligent than white, and by the way, the idea of intelligence as, as a single thing is actually steeped in ableism and racism, and, and this eugenic idea of, we must breed the most intelligent white race, and, you know, breed out the impurities. They're, they're tied to things like, you know, uh, th this idea of the African having a child mind. Yeah, that's literally what people... Uh, 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 it's literally an autistic trope, is, is that, you know, an adult uh, autistic person is somehow, you know, this overgrown child who must be protected from themselves. See? Intersection there. It's, it's, it's using that ableist trope. And so, one of the justifications for, you know, the white man's burden, that is, you know, imperialism, and the same just justification was also used for slavery. Um, that's true, fish and bread, was that, oh, the Africans are uncivilized, they're, they're uh, not as smart or developed culturally or technology as us, the white people. Um, and I was used to justify things like euthanasia, like slavery, like imperialism, like the medicalization of racism. 
the whole idea of uh, drapetomania, which was a uh, a um, a uh, made up disease that was essentially trying to explain why slaves ran away and didn't want to be slaves. Yeah, like I, I feel um, Irish. Fin uh, I mean. Yeah, the whole idea of, you know, the Irish drunkard. Why, their brains are just attracted to alcohol. This whole idea of mental defectiveness due to, you know, this bullshit racial science. And, of course, the same thing with anti-Semitism uh, uh, feeds into uh, ableism. This whole idea that, you know, us Jews are scrawny little schemers who, you know, have no strength and, and you know, are, are, uh, are mentally deranged into thinking. Yeah, there were, like, for hundreds, if not thousands of years, a lot of Christians literally thought that Jews were mentally deranged for not thinking that, uh, that colonizer, uh, will... To be fair, not colonizer, just Jesus, Jesus, um, cause, well, I mean, not Jesus, I really should say Roman Jesus, cause, well, whatever, col we, we, God forbid, we don't think that Jesus was a fucking god, I mean, I'm an atheist Jew, cause Judaism is awesome like that, but that's beside the point, um, yeah, they thought we were mental defectives and deviants and crazy, also, sorry for using that term, but, like, yeah. <laughs> Yummy apple. And, of course, this was implied to indigenous people. This, this whole idea, you know, that, oh, uh, Hernan Cortez came in his, in his sailing ships, and, and the little childlike indigenous people just thought, the gods, we must bow down to them. It's infantilizing. It's it, and of course this whole idea of oh you know the 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 indigenous people just weren't as as a uh, as a uh, as you know it, 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 their their immune system just weren't as good. That's why the diseases that just completely naturally proliferated from the Europeans they never gave smallpox blankets at all. Their inferior immune systems just couldn't take it. Again, the ableism, the assumption that somehow because they were non-white, their bodies were somehow defective in some way. It, it, it go it really, really, really has, has a, a, a lot of similarities to the way disabled people are treated today. The whole idea of, you know, uh, of, uh, conservatorship, of, um, uh, the idea that, you know, you, you, uh, uh, um, well, not only the fact that children have essentially no rights, which is fucked up in the ex extreme, but disabled people today are just treated like little children who can't fucking decide anything for themselves. Uh, what does that sound like? Sounds a hell of a lot like the white man's burden in the idea of the indigenous non-whites as some, you know, baby people who need to be saved and reared like a child for their childish ideas of non-state society and equality as a primary goal. Ugh, such childish values. And why it we do? Mm. 
Went to the mass uh, sterilization of disabled people, obviously. But it also led to the forced sterilization of tons of people of color, specifically black people in the United States. It led to... It's actually led to a lot of so-called mercy killings, where it's like, Oh, this heroic, tragic mother had to put down her son because he was just so autistic. She didn't put him down, she murdered him in this hypothetical scenario. Um, it's, it's straight up murder. Um, oh yeah, and it also, uh, in part led to, you know, the enslavement and, and forced relocation and, and, uh, in effect, genocide of, of millions of Africans. You know, and, oh yeah, and the genocide of, uh, of indigenous people. So, uh, yay! Oh yeah, and imperialism. You know, that's not fun. And also partially led to the Holocaust. Um, and a lot of this... It, I, hell, a lot of Joseph uh, Mengele's experiments were steeped in the, the racist and idea that Jews were somehow genetically inferior. Uh, uh, oh yeah, and, uh, uh, it, you know, all those Drusive experiments, because the Jews aren't human, you know, they are mentally defective, or physically defective, and scrawny, and whatever, and I'm like, yeah, you would be scrawny if you were starved to death. Like, so many... So, so, so many advances in science came at the figurative or literal, literal blood of plenty of people of color. The birth control pill was developed uh, by, without the consent, uh, um, the, the, dr uh, the unknowing drugging of thousands of Puerto Rican women uh, back in the f 1940s and 1950s. This whole idea that, oh, you know, they're Puerto Ricans. Uh, what do we care about them? Um, and, of course, the whole modern field... The whole modern field of medicine has to do with ableism. This idea that we need to correct every so-called mistake. Whereas, like, yeah, fixing broken bones is cool and good. And heart transplants are cool and good. But you know what isn't cool and good? Locking people up in so-called insane asylums. Using autistic shock therapy, which the United Nations condemns as a form of torture which is still practiced widely in the U.S. today. ABA is definitely a form of torture. And singling out specifically electroshock therapy or autistic uh, shock therapy, ableism and sexism. The whole idea that oh, the the hormones of the fe uh, uh, the 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 hormones of the female give them hysteria. Oh, you know, what if the president has? PMS! It, 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 and of course, you know, the whole idea that because on average, uh, um, for lack of a better term, I'll just use, you know, the term of the enemy, uh, women, uh, it, you know, on average are less, um, are less physically, uh, strong 
and have less endurance, etc., etc., than uh, men has been used to essentially demean women as, you know, inferior to do th things like manly jobs, like construction. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, racism also feeds into the ableist idea uh, that black people somehow have a larger pain tolerance. Um, and that can be very dangerous when it comes to things like diagnoses. Um, yeah. Like, again, a lot of the racist, a lot of these stereotypes, especially, uh, to push a pony ball out their penis. <laughs> that's, that's impossible. Um, that, that, is, that is completely impossible. Um, this idea that women, you know, are somehow defective because of their hormones or whatever. And, um, and depending upon the time period, women, uh, are either demonized as sex fiends who are succubi and are sucking all the poor men into their clutches because their sex drives with their hormones are uncontrolled. Um, a very harmful and bullshit idea, whereas, um, it's, I'm pretty sure it's still taught in the U.S., DJ Che. Um, I, I would be surprised if it wasn't. Uh, I could be wrong. Like, I don't have a source for this, so take, uh, that for what you will. Um, but I, I guess I really should say I would not be surprised if, if it was still taught in the United States. Um, yeah, women, it, there was a whole diagnostic process, a uh, diagnostic thing literally called, it, it, the whole idea of hysteria is literally just woman doth protest too much. The, it, it, and of course, you know, um, there, um, on other times uh, where, uh, where you know, women aren't portrayed as it's, uh, it sex-fueled succubi duping the innocent men folk, um, women as a category are categorized as, oh, they're shrews, they do not like sex, the female orgasm is a myth. Sex is only good to females as a way of giving birth. This whole idea that it doesn't matter that a woman, or in more woke terminology, uh, pussy havers, uh, can't have pleasure. Yeah, the, the, that's kind of horseshit. And it's ableist because it's this idea that women's bodies, because they don't have a penis, are inherently inferior. A myth to you, exactly. Oh, trust me. Um, yeah, I know exactly. Uh, uh, but no, I I have uh, I have plenty of uh, of eyewitness and uh, and personal uh, experience testimony to the contrary. That yes, indeed, people with vaginas and and or women, because uh, not all women have vaginas, and not all people with vaginas are women. Uh, you know, can and do orgasm. Yeah, so, uh, of course, you know, the, it, it, and of course, a lot of times women have been infantilized. This whole idea of the patriarch of protecting and providing for the woman and children. Yeah, note the framing of women and children in the same time. See, Oh, ableism, infantilization of people is inherently ableist because it promotes this idea that they're not fully developed, they're not autonomous beings who can think for themselves. They make bad decisions, etc., etc., which children only make bad decisions and are immature because of the way our society prescribes uh, raising children. Oh, yeah, and also because they don't have experience that adults do. There's, there, 
Linking women to children essentially infantilizes women and essentially says they're weak and, and, and can't do anything and are only suited for secretarial jobs and only until they can be saved and nurtured and provided by... By a man. Uh, and that, that's just steeped in ableism. The whole idea that women, because they're women, uh, A, the idea that we biological female is a, a thing, um, yeah, there are primary sex characteristics. Okay, w why are we giving them labels that don't make corresponding sense and then mixing them up with gender? Uh, but this whole idea that women are immutably emotion it, and it's interesting because like most uh, most other vectors of oppression it flip-flops between what exactly is supposedly wrong with uh with women uh it's either their sex uh the excuse my ableist language but they're sex crazed mean maniacs or shrewish harpies who can't orgasm um which, of course, are both supposed, you know, disabilities. Uh, it, va it also vacillates between... Um, it, it, now I forget what I was going to say. Um, oh, yeah. And, of course, racism, sexism, and ableism intersect. Uh, because back in ye olden... Uh, uh, um, what's number eight on the axioms of fascism? And is that specifically referring to Umberto Eco's 14 points? Um, this whole idea of, oh, you know, black women are totally fine to rape because they can't really intellectually understand what's going on and they're like children. Do you actually notice how creepy it is that those racists thought of their slaves as children and yet, and therefore they were perfectly fine with, 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 raping children that's it's almost as if slavery bad racism bad rape bad oh you mean uh, the enemy being both large and small yeah i mean fascism's main tenet is that it's uh, intentionally and by definition incoherent you can't have a consist in in you can't have an internally consistent ideology and call it fascist. It's literally impossible. Like for all its problems, liberalism, uh, or at least its center left variety, is largely internally consistent. What I mean by internally consistent is that if you have a liberal worldview, all of the concepts make sense. Such as, uh, like, if you think humans are inherently, uh, in, in inherently, um, selfish, then what are you gonna do but, you know, have a strong state to supposedly regulate it? Um, or rather, um, it... I guess it also might be the center-right variation, too. But my point is, is that liberalism is not completely, because, you know, we're human. No ideology is perfectly uh, coherent. But uh, liberalism is largely internally consistent. Uh, fascism isn't. Which is why they can believe th uh, such wildly different things as women are immutably weak and must be protected because they are children, and women are uh, uh, suck you by sex crazed maniacs. Excuse the able, uh, the incredibly ableist terminology there. Uh, that must uh, that must be uh, you know uh, locked away at all costs because of the poor poor men. Uh, uh, you know, they can believe both of those things at the same time. Going on, uh, inter another, uh, and of course, the whole idea of hysteria was deeply ableist and also sex. Hysteria was a specifically female, uh, specifically female 
disease. That's if I recall correctly, if it if it wasn't the specific uh, a specific criterion to be a woman, um it was at least de facto a a sexist uh uh a, 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 a diagnosed based purely on sexism. Which I mean, no surprise, hysteria hysteria is a fucking made up disorder. And I mean, to be fair, with the amount of overlap between a lot of different neurodivergent things, sometimes I wonder how many of these diagnoses are arbitrary. Well, I mean, all of them are, but... So it, it, I mean, I'd rather have more, more, you know, different types of labels than less, because it means, you know, more people will be diagnosed who otherwise wouldn't be. Um, and that's, from my experience, a good thing. Um, let's see, where were we? Ah, yes, queerness. Queerness and disability. I mean, this is pretty obvious. People think there's something medically and mentally wrong with you if you're any sort of queer. Uh, queerness, and, uh, it used to be, uh, specifically, uh, uh, gay people, uh, but now it's trans people. This idea that all queer people, or, you know, gay people, or trans people, or whatever, are, are, uh, hi, Castle, um, are, you know, pedophiles, uh, is deeply ableist, because the whole framing of it. I can get down with the, the idea that minor attracted people are disordered like i'm very sex and fetish positive but by definition children cannot consent to having sex so pedophilia is wrong but we should treat it as a disease not a moral failing it's one of the you know few neur uh, uh uh and it's it's not like the same disability like but i would consider it one like, you literally are attracted to children. That's fucking horrible. Because children can't consent, and if you act on those urges, then you're going to traumatize someone for the rest of their fucking lives. Um, we need to start treating minor attracted people as being diseased individuals. That's not a bad thing, and it shouldn't be. Um, exactly. And I'm not going... Oh, God. If anyone clips that, they're probably going to be like, Oh, anarchy is pro-pedophile. And I'm like, fuck no. I need to have a very big qualifier by saying that minor attracted people acting upon their urges is horrible. Um, I don't believe in laws and I still think it should be illegal. I'm sorry, but you can't consent as a child to sex. Now, the definition of child can, you know, change and vary or whatever, but you literally can't. That's the, that's a disability that hurts people, as uh, as you said, and you know, and 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 of course, you know, uh, they link uh, a, a disability that is pedophilia. Uh, d d d d see, there's a difference between being attracted to 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 minors and like acting on it. Um, you know, one will probably cause a lot of emotional stress, but I'm sure if they go to therapy, uh, they'll pro they'll more than likely be able to, you know, not traumatize children uh, versus actually acting out on it. You know, that that's bad. But of course, uh, people link pedophilia to queerness. Uh, uh, somehow we're, uh, again, you know diseased in the mind, delusional thinking that we're another gender. Why, you have a penis, therefore you must be deranged in the head to think that you're not a biological male. This... And, of course, you know, the, the whole drag queen story time hour is essentially... It, like, it's, it's applying the whole idea of degeneracy to queer people. Uh, because apparently, because we, we see that, uh, that gender and sex and sexual orientation are kind of horseshit and all, um, 
we're somehow defective human beings. You know, our brains aren't working correctly. Uh, like, like, that really is the conservative talking point, uh, uh is essentially, uh, uh oh, it, ha <laughs> they're so delusional, the lefties, thinking that gender is mutable, this, this, this whole, hey, thank you for the follow. This whole idea that, you know, if you don't identify as cis and straight, you are an inferior species, an inferior thing of humanity that must be cured. A lot of the, the, the ableism running in these uh, vectors of oppression also has this idea that they must be cured, you know? And by cured, it means tortured in various ways. The most obvious example is... Uh, is slavery and uh, non-slave imperialism, which isn't m much better. Uh, this idea that, oh, you know, they must be uplifted by the superior whites, that, that the white man has the duty to civilize and, you know, to, to, to guide the child Africans to, uh, to adulthood or some other racist bullshit. Um... Is tied to this idea that they must be cured of their race. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a gay and now trans uh, conversion therapy is this idea that somehow trans and queer people are diseased in the mind and must be cured. The whole idea that things that that disabilities by default must be cured um, is ableism. Uh, it, like, I mean, the, if I recall correctly, the motto for some residential schools was kill the Indian, spare the man. That's literally, that's literally saying indigenous people need to be cured of their indigeneity. But, but like, the whole idea of... I mean, it was they were essentially special education, but instead of being mentally R-worded, uh, uh, they were mentally indigenous, and you know that's 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 literal genocide. It's literal genocide, and uh, of course. Um, Yeah, that is true. That is very true. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, and if you're autistic, getting uh, getting uh, getting doctors to believe that you're queer is such a fucking uphill battle, especially if you were uh, if you were uh, if you were assigned female at birth. Getting most doctors to accept that, yeah, maybe it's actually easier for autistic people to realize that gender is bullshit because our brains work differently uh, and can see through, it, from what I can tell, uh, you know, especially autistic people. Let me put it this way. There's a term that I really love. It's called neuroqueer. It's, it's if you're queer and neurodivergent. It's, it's kind of because a lot of us are especially if you're on the spectrum, because, you know, we see the world differently, which, I mean, this is probably my hottest take. If vaccines caused autism, that actually might be a good thing. Now, they don't, and it's incredibly ableist, uh, not to mention dangerous for the survival of the species, uh, that uh, people think vaccines cause autism, is that a bad thing? But I'm going on the opposite end. This is like an incredibly spicy take that I won't put on Twitter because fuck Twitter. But it's almost as bad I'm putting it on Twitch. I firmly do believe that we could use a few more autistic people. Because um, we're more likely to be revolutionary. <laughs> I mean, that's true of most oppressed minorities. But like, especially with autistic people because we literally think differently. Um, there's that. 
Uh, and because of that, if you're queer, uh, and, you know, this idea of, oh, you can't tie your own shoelaces, how are you supposed to know what your gender is? Uh... <laughs> Again, the idea that, like, auti one of the symptoms of autism is not being a cis. Not being a straight. Uh, how could you need, uh, um, uh, you need, uh, you are non-verb- Oh, and don't even get me started on the ableism of fucking non-verbal, uh, 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 people. And the whole idea of high-functioning- uh, don't use the term high and low functioning. Use the term, uh, in terms of, uh, care needs. Uh, for instance, uh, I have, uh, relatively low, like, care needs. Uh, I'm pretty independent on most things. Um, I just need to, like, you know, point that out. It, it, it... This idea that somehow, because you have more care needs you somehow don't know whether you're queer or not, which, again, the irony is is that autistic people, from my experience and from those others who I've talked to, um, because there haven't been any, like, academic studies, and if there were, I m might not trust them, uh, because medical studies literally torture neurodivergent people, especially if they're autistic. Um, uh, <laughs> We're better able to to uh, to realize our gender, but especially uh, uh, also because the diagnostic criteria is deeply sexist for autism, uh, because it was developed by a Nazi in all but name. Uh, fuck you, Hans Asperger. Uh, rest in absolute piss. Uh, the diagnose, diagnostic criteria that he came up with. Oh, fun fact: he sent a lot of uh, autistic Jews to concentration camps. Um, oh, if you want to know, uh, if, if, if you want to stay up nights and, and, uh, develop depression if you haven't already, uh, get the audiobook, which I'm pretty sure is in my G drive, uh, Asperger's Children. It is, it is truly horrifying. Um, uh, yeah, the autistic, uh, the ASD diagnoses are, uh, uh, uh remain largely unchanged since the 1930s, uh, the diagnostic criteria that were done by a literal fascist. Um, and they're, uh, they're heavily biased towards cis, straight, white kids, white men, or white boys, cis, straight, white boys, because that's literally who Hans, the, no the, no the fascist Asperger, studied. So, uh, you're a lot less likely to get diagnosed if you are, uh, with autism if you are assigned female at birth. And because of that bullshit, uh, you're also, uh, seen as, uh, a lot of people, you know, see autistic people as these eternal children who don't have minds of our own or are essentially blank slates. If I recall correctly, that's what the founder of ABA thought. And so, if we're just blank slates, then of course, the transgenders are putting their stamp on the autism. And, of course, that feeds into uh, queer misia and ableism interacting. And, again, reminder, if, if you're queer, you're considered by many to be a pedophile and or... Uh, obligatory reminder that homosexuality was in the DSM until, like, the 1980s, I think. I don't know the exact date, but I do know it was in the DSM. Anyways, um, fuck, what the hell was I talking about? Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, of other examples. Um, well, like, a lot of this, it, there is, like, god, I could just go on way more. Um, there's also, of course, the idea that somehow, um, you know, Oh, yeah, there's also the idea that physically disabled people don't have sex... That just disabled people, period, don't have sex drives. And if you, uh, if you couple that with especially sexism and queer misia, you get a whole fucked up package. 
Oh, and ace people are considered degenerates and deviants and mentally defective. Uh, it, sorry for the ableist bullshit. Because, what? You're a human and you don't like sex? Or, you're a human and you don't like romance? There must be something wrong with you. And, sadly, I used to, I mean... I use, I still have a lot of internalized ableism. It's called living in a society uh, with anxiety and depression. Or also just living in a society, but... Yeah, the, if the medicalization of, of things like race, it... Fuck, there was, there's even an intersection between classism and, uh... And, uh, and, and ableism. Especially back in the day at the height of eugenics. Rich folks just thought poor people, even if they were white, were also just mentally degenerate. I mean, if I recall correctly, Giovanni Lombroso, who, uh, the irony is he was an Italian, and a lot of people didn't consider Italians white back in the day. Um... Uh, Giovanni Lombroso literally said, oh, Giovanni Lombroso said if you were an anarchist, he specifically called out anarchists as being atavistic and mentally degenerated. Um, I had the very, very dubious pleasure and I might force myself to reread it in the future of reading selections of the book Degener uh, Degeneracy, uh, no, Degeneration by, no, it was Max Nordau who said, uh, but Lombroso probably would have agreed. Uh, actually, I think he did agree, but I don't have a source. Uh, G uh, uh, Max Nordau, who, fun fact, was one of the co-founders of the World Zionist Congress which uh, with uh, Theodore Herzl. Coincidence? Actually, probably not, because most people were like that back then, <laughs> but it's an interesting, uh, 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 I'd say it's more of a correlation, not a causation, um, uh, uh but, yeah, uh, Max Nordau, uh, claimed that anarchists are atavistic and mentally degenerate. Atavism, as a concept, is ableist because it's this whole idea of, oh, these people are a reflection of primitive man. Uh, this idea that, you know, people, uh, you know, literally, like, poor people were, were con uh, considered by the, uh, this dipshit to be, uh, throwbacks to, uh, some primitive era because, I mean, if they're not rich, then there must be something defective with them, and therefore, it's fine if we let millions of them die. It's this, it's this whole idea that, you know, it, and that's where a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, 19th century Tory welfare comes from. It's the idea that, you know, the poors are just children and they must be lifted up by, uh, by the state. You know, they're, they're, oh, this actually reminds me, there's still this trope of black people being, you know, lazy, lay about, you know, they the welfare queens, you know, sitting on their asses, not doing anything and collecting a paycheck. That's, that's literally what people will talk about, uh, disabled people with very high care needs, uh, you know, uh, burdens on society. Um, it's, it's the same framing as, uh, as the racist bullshit of welfare queens, uh, uh, and, uh, oh, you know, it's, this shit is just fucking everywhere. Um, into, uh, yeah, well, the thing is, is that we're not burdens on society. And, like, we don't, we don't have to be, uh, if, 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 if. If supposedly we were, I'm sorry, but the state paying disability and welfare is literally the least it could do. Somehow I think the $700 billion spent yearly on the United States military budget could, even if, even if fucking... One percent, no, even if ten per, no, even if one percent of that, that is seven billion, 
And I don't know how much, you know, welfare or SSI or whatever costs the U.S. government, but it's probably less than 5% of the military budget. Oh, yeah, and also the FBI budget, the police budget, the CIA budget. Uh, all this shit could be used for other things, but it's, it's a state. Why the fuck would it do that if it can just spend more money on oppressive apparatuses? Um, oh, yeah, also, um, it costs less to to do things like welfare and disability because housing homeless people and uh and uh and guaranteeing employment means that you have to spend less on things like food stamps and welfare and uh, and you know other things like that um it's almost as if this uh, the 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 capitalist system uh can't function efficiently if it was efficient then it wouldn't be exploiting people Um, God, I, I think I pretty much covered everything I want to cover. I mean, it's, it's kind of like very baseline. I didn't go into like any really deep theory. I don't think, um, I guess I could, like, ask for questions while, while I kind of think about what that was. Um, but yeah, like, a lot of, uh, it literally just classism was, was buttressed a lot. You know, this whole idea, you know, poor people are just lazy and need to pick themselves up by their bootstraps. That's still very prevalent today. The whole idea of being lazy is ableist. You're not lazy, you're just alienated from the shit that you, uh, that you're forced to do under our bullshit system, and therefore, uh, are disincentivized to do it. Disabled people aren't lazy, uh, a lot of us also just have problems with things like executive functioning, so, even in a perfect society, executive functions, things like dressing oneself, brushing one's teeth, in my case, signing up for classes, going to class, etc., is hard for a lot of neurodivergent people, including myself. I need to do a lot of work just to fucking get ready in the morning. And it, you know, people don't realize how much work I need to put in to do simple things like hiking myself up to do a Twitch stream. Um, you know, I really don't chill enough for myself. Like, I don't think I've gotten a dono or a sub in, like, months. Why don't y'all fuckers pay for my goddamn labor? Come on, I gave you a fucking hours and hours and hours of free history shit. Um, I hate money, but until, uh, until it's, uh, until it is, uh, abolished, I want, please. Also, if you want things like a special role in my Discord, um, and, uh, your name in the pre-credits thing, uh, do the Patreon. All my tiers are names of Jewish anarchists. Uh, spoiler alert, $20 tier is uh, the Emma Goldman tier. Wait, it's either $10 or $20 is the Emma Goldman tier, um, which is the person that like everyone knows because, I mean, she was pretty awesome. Um, God damn it. Ugh! Also, I have a new dono, uh, a, a new dono alert, and you stingy fucks haven't, uh, haven't, uh, it, haven't triggered it. 